Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable ball here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As guys, we had a major breakthrough. Bitcoin got to pass the $38,000 mark earlier today. And I just want to say a couple things. We continue to get higher highs and higher lows. We are in a 100% confirmed bull market. And I could tell you one thing right now. We are going to experience a backlogged altcoin season. From all the chirpings I've been hearing from the crypto industry. From all the rumors I've been getting from CEOs. A lot of the things that we were expecting to happen in 2022 are going to come back full force in 2024. Don't believe me and miss out. Guys, I do expect in the coming days to see a short-term pullback, a healthy pullback, and an overall long-term uptrend. And despite the fact that you'll probably see the sentiment shift, a complete 180 from perma-bullish today to mildly bearish next week, you have to remember that the midterm is clear. The midterm is is what I like to use to gauge what's going to happen in the next couple months. I believe in the next six months we will see our old coin season. And know that XRP is going to lead from the front of this bull market. Here we have Brian Brooks, managing partner of Valor Capital, saying it's not XRP trying to replace the dollar. It's trying to replace the system of transmitting value. So for me, the price is not that relevant anymore than Google's volatility is. And in the early days of Google, that was super volatile. Brian Brooks is bullish on XRP, my friends. And the big reason why is because we're not competing with the system. We're making the system better. So the point that I always try and tell people is, you know, the, the biggest issue that I always try and focus on is cryptocurrencies are really not about currency. And, and the biggest misunderstanding of this whole discussion is the belief that if crypto is not doing a great job of replacing the U.S. dollar, uh, then crypto is failing in its mission. And what I, what I think we'll talk about a little bit today is the idea that most of crypto is about replacing the centralized banking system with networks that allow user control versus bank CEO control. The crypto assets that have prices are more like internet stocks. It's more like you bet on Google if you think there's going to be high internet traffic and you short Google if you think people are going to go back to the post office, right? But it's not that Ethereum or Ripple or anything else is trying to replace the US dollar. It's trying to replace a system of transmitting value. And we'll talk a lot more about that. So for me, the prices are not that relevant any more than Google's volatility is. And in the early days of Google, that was super volatile. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think I understand the dilemma the XRP army faces in regards to the general crypto community. You know, the typical maxi that's out here saying that the XRP army is a band of conspiracy theorists. The XRP army are the teachers pet in the front of the classroom. When in reality, we're just making a bet. The XRP community is making a bet that the people that print trillions of dollars, that the people that control the armies of the world, that the people that have most of the governments in their pocket are not going to fail in regards to changing this banking system and allow some currency that failed in its only mission of being a global payment system and being anonymous, quite frankly, in Bitcoin is going to take over that. I don't believe Bitcoin is going to take over the banking system. I think it's going to be a tool for storing value. I think that's a great use case, but Bitcoin failed on its original mission. XRP is still well on pace for its original vision. And this is a difference. I believe we will be used in their international payment settlement system. And we are seeing that and we are seeing the infrastructure being built for XRP to play that role. We've been seeing the roadmap get additional checklists. And here, with the change of regulatory clarity coming to the United States because of Ripple, we are going to make strides in ensuring the price is where it's supposed to be.
XRP under a dollar will not solve any problems. XRP at a much higher value, like David Schwartz originally stated years ago, is where we're going. Here's Stu Alderati, Ripple's general counsel, stated the SEC is trying to foster uncertainty, and we have that from their internal emails they got during this SEC case. Ladies and gentlemen, Ripple got a lot of dirty laundry from the SEC during this Ripple case, and 99% of this case was positive for us, retail investors, and Ripple as a whole. This case was a massive blunder. And that's why Gary Gunsler is going to be on his way out. Oh, Gary. You dug your own grave, Gary. And Ripple was the nail in the coffin. Uh, we also know that because the SEC has been working intentionally, at least since 2015, to force, foster greater uncertainty in the marketplace. And again, we have that from their internal emails. We know that the general counsel of the SEC advised senior officials at the SEC that they are fostering greater uncertainty rather than bringing clarity. And, and uh, George, I think you'll appreciate this point given the work you've, you do. Um, a regulator likes uncertainty because they can play with uncertainty by not defining the rules and therefore punish the market through this regulation by, in, by enforcement. And most, if you get an SEC enforcement <coughs> letter, investigative subpoena, it's a very expensive and grueling process. The process becomes the punishment. Our CEO has been very public that our defense against the SEC um, has cost us well over $100 million, approaching $150 million. Um, very few startup companies or the privately held companies have those sorts of resources. And that's what the SEC counts on, that they'll surrender uh, through a settlement and then they can point to the settlement and you say, see, the laws are clear, but that's not clear laws. That's basically leveraging the uncertainty to bully smaller players and uh, either, as I say, force them offshore, force them into a settlement, or force them into bankruptcy court. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't that absolutely unbelievable? Ripple being one of the most compliant, most transparent crypto companies in the United States and frankly on the planet. They've gone through stricter vetting processes than most of the banks you put money in. And they got sued. $150 million that could have been used for more acquisitions, could have been used for better causes, could have been used for hiring people. Instead, $150 million was used to battle our own government that's stopping innovation, halting this economy, making us lose to other countries in the blockchain space. The SEC was weaponized against us and our entrepreneurs. What the hell has America turned to? Ladies and gentlemen, this is an absolute catastrophe. But what I'm here to stress is this. I do think the tide is changing. I do think we're further along in the crypto space in America than people give us credit for. And despite the fact that regulators and these dinosaurs in Congress suffering from dementia are tyrannical and don't understand the nature of the damage that they've created, they can't stop progress. They can't stop technology. They can't stop the hustle. And they definitely cannot stop XRP adoption. They need it. And when the problem reaction solution moment comes, XRP will be prepared for it. XRP will be the first choice when the last resort comes. We're all going to be glad we had it. Now, guys, to cap off this video for today, I'm going to leave you with this clip, a dialogue with the BIS head Augustin Corstens at the Bank of Korea talking about CBDCs and the future of the monetary system. Guys, I don't tell you what the president of the United States or other countries are telling you because that's the news for the masses. 
Instead, I give you direct quotes from the global elites, the people that actually run the world. And if you paid attention, you'll be more intelligent and more well-informed than 99% of people. Keep your eyes on the prize, my friends. We will become the new 1%. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable ball here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. The possibility of representing assets digitally through tokens that encompass all of the information about an asset and what can be done with it. And in the not so distant future, rapid adoption in artificial intelligence and quantum computing. Exploiting these technological advances would allow us to build a financial system centered on the individual. This would enable a far-reaching democratization of finance where each person has access to a digital representation of any asset for financial purposes, regardless of its value. And they would be able to send or receive such assets in any unit or amount to anyone, anywhere, anytime, using any device. In other words, individuals could experience the same level of ease, immediacy, privacy, security, and reliability from the monetary and financial system that they find in other parts of their lives, such as when they make a long distance call to anywhere practically for free, or make an e-commerce purchase from their smartphone. Society rightly expects nothing less. Yet the sad truth is that these growing expectations have outpaced the ability of our segmented financial system to deliver. The best way to knit together transactions and operations among markets and financial services is to bring them onto shared programmable platforms. This is what we have labeled a unified ledger. A unified ledger would be a network of networks that would allow various components of the financial system to work seamlessly together. In particular, it would have the potential to combine the monetary system, that is central bank money and commercial bank money, with other assets, making possible the instantaneous payment, clearing, and settlement of any transaction. Such a ledger would allow for the use of smart contracts and composability. A smart contract is a computer program that executes conditional if, then, and while commands. Composability means that many smart contracts covering a huge variety of transactions and situations can be bundled together like money Lego. With these new functionalities, any sequence of transactions in programmable money and digital assets could be automated and seamlessly integrated. This would eliminate the need for manual interventions that delay transactions. It would also enable simultaneous instant payments and atomic settlement across a whole range of assets. From the above, it is clear that the three main components of the unified ledger are digital and programmable money, digital assets, and the digital infrastructure that supports their operation and integrity. And for all these three components to work together, the key step is tokenization. Tokenization is a means of recording money and assets in a digital form on a programmable ledger. These tokens integrate the records of an asset normally found in a traditional database with the rules and logic governing their transfer. In practical terms, this means that users could transfer assets directly through programming instructions rather than through intermediaries such as account managers that act on behalf of the user. 
This transformation can unlock numerous benefits. For one, it enhances an automation and facilitates faster, cheaper, and more convenient transactions, alongside more efficient settlements processes. This could help overcome the settlement risks associated with delivery versus payment and payment versus payment arrangements, which are currently imperfectly dealt with through specialized institutions or workarounds such as escrow. Programmability could also enable the contingent performance of multiple transactions through smart contracts and composability. This opens the door to novel types of economic arrangement that are currently not feasible due to incentive and information frictions, even though they make perfect sense from an economic point of view. <clears throat> 